All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your first uh, Biology 12 video. This one is for students that haven't taken Chemistry 11 or just want a little quick refresher on uh, atoms and some of the bonding. So the first thing you need to know is there's a, in an atom there's three particles that make it up, and the first one is a proton, which is a par positively charged uh, subatomic particle uh, found in the nucleus. We also have electrons, which is our negatively charged a particle that's going to be found in the buzzing around in the uh, outer orbit of our atom. And then finally neutrons which have essentially no charge and you find them inside of our nucleus. So you can pause that now to get those ones jotted down. Here's a little diagram of uh, essentially what they look like. We have our protons in the middle, we have our neutrons, and there are our electrons that will be buzzing around in different energy levels outside of our nucleus. So when it comes to bonding, what essentially allows uh, atoms to come together, we have to base it on something called the octet rule. So essentially what this means is that all of the uh, atoms want to have eight electrons. So in order to do that, a lot of the times they either have to borrow, or they donate some of theirs away, or they're going to share. Okay. Uh, later on when we talk in terms of organic chemistry, uh, the carbon is kind of our essential atom and we need to have four bonds because each bond uh, will be using two electrons. Okay, So you can jot that down. The first thing that we need to know before we can get into the bonding is, uh, is ions. Essentially, if you want to get eight electrons, uh, you would have to do it one of two ways. Either you lose it because you have an extra one, or you're going to have to gain one because you only have seven. In the case of sodium, it has uh, all of its inner shells filled, but this last outer shell, ha shell has one. And it's a lot easier to lose one electron than to gain seven. So it loses its outer electron in order to become a stable uh, sodium ion that's ready to, to bond. And what it does, this time we're looking at calcium and chlorine, this is what when an ionic bond is created, calcium has two electrons in its outer shell. If it gets rid of those, it will be able to be stable. It'll have its octet and then chlorine has seven and it wants to gain one. So by calcium donating an electron to each of the chlorine atoms, causing all of them to become ionics, it creates this thing called an ionic bond. And really what it is, is just because uh, they're trying to fill their, their octets to become stable. Okay, so now this is CaCl2, and they have, calcium has given away two electrons, so it becomes a positive two, because you're losing a negative. And chlorine becomes negative one, because you're gaining one negative for both of them. So again, essentially what an ionic bond is, is the joining of a positive ion with a negative ion. And what they do is they exchange electrons. So the metal is going to be giving the non-metals an electron. So pause that if you need to. Uh, the second type of bonding that we're going to be looking at is covalent bonding. And this is where non-metals are going to be joined together and what they do rather than donating electrons from one to the next they're going to share them because right now if this is a chlorine ion or a fluorine uh, they have seven electrons in their outer shell and neither of them want to give up an electron so what they end up doing is kind of like a tug, tug of war each of them are pulling on each other's outer electrons until eventually they just share so since they have seven they share one of the other um, atoms electrons and it gives it their eight and we call this covalent bonding so the last thing is uh, is is a dipole and what happens on some molecules is that you can actually have this unequal distribution of charge so here we showed it with the water molecule so what we have is oxygen and hydrogen oxygen needed to gain two electrons and in order to do that it borrowed them from hydrogen. And so since this oxygen has gained two electrons, we say that it has a partial negative charge. And this little symbol here, the Greek symbol, all it really means is partial. And then hydrogen, since it gave away electron, has this partial positive charge. Okay, So it essentially has this molecule that has a negative end and a positive end. 
Okay, we're going to see the uh, the benefits of this when we look at hydrogen bonding in our first video or in our uh, next video. Okay, so essentially what a dipole is, it's molecules with slight positive and negative regions. Okay, so you can jot down that little definition and that picture because it'll be very useful when we see our next video. Okay, so if there's any ex other questions about chemistry uh, background, feel free to pop in and, and ask, but otherwise you should be ready to go for biomolecules number two.